Hi, and welcome back to Katie's Corner in Space. If you haven't already, please subscribe below. Good things happen if you do. For example, today I'll be talking about a favorite character, partly because last Saturday my dad and I had a chat about him and how this character could never have been portrayed honestly when I was a kid. Heck, even a decade ago, it would have been risky. But on screen, we get an accurate rendering of John Gray through the exceedingly attractive actor, David Barry. He's just pretty. This Lord John appreciation video is dedicated to my dad and those of you who were passionate in your love of John Gray as a father who I did not mention in my Father's Day video much. Not because he isn't a good father to William, but because that video was about those truly fearful moments and we just haven't gotten there on screen. I mean, there was that time John was ill on the ridge, but I think there was really more fear he'd not pull through. William was well away with no symptoms. Anyway, on screen, I just didn't feel there was enough material, which is what I do try to stick to. While Frank has been a scared and controlling jackass for quite some time, we got quite a bit about his relationship with Bree on screen, which quite frankly, gave me more material to work with. And now, on to Lord John. When we first meet this teenager, he's attempting to kill Jamie. That plan, however, backfired on him and he's soon captured. As he's interrogated, he then attempts to save Claire from, of all people, her own husband. But he's nothing more than a blip in the story after giving up the details he knew of the British Army. A bit of comedic relief, if anything, because of the circumstances. Between Claire's sideways glances at Jamie and John's proclamation of a debt of honor with Jamie's bow and a sideways grin, it was a lighter moment needed in all the drama of the episode. In the books, young John suffers a bit more, but he's left to be found by his fellow Englishman, only slightly broken. And we don't meet him again until he is broken in another way. At Ardsmere, in much the same way as Jamie, he is alone, having lost his love. Dead and not lost in time, but because of the heartache, he and Jamie meet each other both with broken hearts. This relationship, though under the most odd of circumstances, grows into one of tentative trust. First, from necessity, as Lord John needs Jamie's language expertise, and then through simple conversations concerning the prison, games of chess, and often food as they share a meal. And though for a moment John misreads the situation, his respect for Jamie grows as he knows him, even after an escape and a surrendering return. And when John gave Jamie his life despite Jamie's request to be taken, then gave him a possibility for a future Lord John gained a true friend, Jamie as well, one he would lean on for years to come despite their obvious opposing views politically. For as much as Jamie was a Scot who believed he and his people should live their lives by their traditions, John Gray was an Englishman who believed Scotland belonged to the crown and Jamie one of his majesty's own. Jamie's path to freedom had been given through John's connection so it should be no surprise he promised to visit and was true to his word. Playing chess and checking on Jamie's life progress soon became some of the more poignant scenes as time progressed. There was never any doubt John still carried a torch for our red-haired hero, but in that torch burned a fierce loyalty which became all too obvious when he was asked to be father to a son Jamie had fathered but could never rightly lay claim to for fear of the boy William's future. As luck would have it as the husband of William's aunt who would be his mother as his had passed in childbirth. This would put him in the most convenient of positions to do just that. And so Lord John would say goodbye to his most precious of friends and take on the mantle of father to a child he could not help but love. If for no other reason than the boy was an extension of the man he would always love. This scene always kills me. Time passes and life changes as it often does Lord John's position changed and he found himself reassigned to, of all places, Jamaica. Quite by coincidence, Jamie shows up just as he does, and a reunion comes about with some slightly uncomfortable moments as Claire is introduced. In the books, Claire and John's initial meeting is quite different. 
I rather enjoyed the on-screen version, especially the story of Jamie surrendering the sapphire John now wears. Catriona plays uncomfortable but ladylike so well, and though little is said as Jamie and John catch up, Claire can see the men have a unique relationship. Once again, in the books, more is said, and Jamie and John will catch up properly, discussing William's progress, of course, but in both versions, their reunion is a happy one for the most part. And of course, his presence here was essential in ensuring Jamie was not taken into custody. And let's face it, this exchange is probably one of the top moments of the entire third season. We just arrived. I've not yet had the opportunity. Lieutenant. Captain. Do you mean to say you have neither warrant nor affidavit to support your claim? Surely you do not mean to arrest a British subject on nothing more than the scurrilous gossip of the lower deck. Your authority ends at the water's edge, which is precisely where my authority begins. And until such time as I am satisfied as to the validity of this alleged warrant, this man will retain his liberty. Your Excellency. Thank you, Lieutenant Leonard. In the fourth season, we get so many doses of Lord John, it feels like a treat. He, of course, comes to the ridge, bringing Willie along with the bad case of measles, as they both mourn the passing of Isabel, Lord John's wife, and the only mother Willie had ever known, his aunt. There are some amazingly sweet, poignant moments during this first meeting, not only between Willie and Jamie, but between Lord John and his other former prisoner, Murtaugh. And of course, that particular moment could never have happened in the books. There's also the moments at dinner where Lord John is boasting the new governor's palace and Murta is voicing his thoughts on the taxes. All the while, Jamie and Claire attempt to ensure an argument doesn't ensue. However, once Murta excuses himself, talk turns to chess and the privy. John is nursed by Claire, and his measles cause a terrible fever, headache, and at first it worsens, while Jamie gets to know his son. In this time, there is an obvious discomfort between Claire and John, but who wouldn't feel out of place being cared by the wife of the man you love? He admits his lingering love for Jamie to Claire. This exchange they have is fierce, yet entirely respectfully honest. John, as well as Claire, are visibly shaken, as both admit they can't help who they are. They were each born that way. And now I submit, if you are not tearing up by the end of this scene, you aren't quite human. And by the time he's recovering, their relationship is friendlier. Much like his second meeting with Jamie, John finds he has something in common with Claire. The knowledge they could never have made the partner they had to settle for happy, even though they had loved them. Frank could never have been to her what Jamie had been, and Isabel would never have been John's perfect match either. By the time John has recovered, he and William are ready to go. They have found a bond of respect and friendship. He's told he deserves happiness by Claire, and that he's a good father by Jamie. All in all, it's been a good visit. And then later he visits Jocasta, this time without William. The visit itself was a request made by Jamie, but when Brianna's forced marriage seems imminent, she decides to take the only control she had in her life as a pregnant woman of means in the 18th century with a host of suitors. The choice of husband. And after discovering Lord John in a compromising position, revealing his sexual preference, she thought she had a foolproof plan. Until she discovers preference doesn't necessarily mean abhorrence of the other choice. But Lord John, ever the gentleman, takes her blackmail in stride and again finds himself truly befriending yet another of the Fraser clan, ready to save her from a worse fate by acting as her fiancé to save her from another's eminent proposal. He fesses up to his feelings for her father as well and she reveals the truth about her pregnancy while he insists she's not to lose hope. And while he speaks of William, it's an example of how an adoptive father can love his child, and he keeps the secret of his parentage while doing so. Later we see him as he takes her to see Bonnet before his scheduled hanging and eventual escape. It did take some coaxing by Brianna, but he walks her there asking her all the while if she's sure she wants to speak with this criminal. Right until she walks into the cells, he's worried for her, trying to protect her. Of course, Murta is also being freed right about then, so things get sticky for a bit while Lord John and he decide who should take Brianna 
but they all run before the place blows. I'd like to mention in the book version, not only is there no Murtaugh at this time, but Lord John ends up in need of medical attention right about now, so the on-screen version really works better for all involved. Luckily, John Gray, Brianna's true husband, returns before any drastic measures are taken by the unlikely couple by way of actual nuptials. When Roger and Brianna finally do tie the knot in an official ceremony in the fifth season, it's no surprise Lord John is sitting with the other guests celebrating the happy couple's nuptials, unless you've read the book. And it's a sincere pleasure seeing him mix with the other attendees. What's surprising is his news. Bonnet has been cited, he was not killed, and John has brought the news to his friend Jamie who, like the rest of his clan, thought the rapist had died in the jail when it exploded and burned. I suppose two weddings and almost two funerals would be a good name for the fifth season when it comes to John because we see him again at Jocasta's wedding, though mostly to be single and fairly unwilling to mingle. Then again as he attempts to help Brianna get through Roger's accidental attempt at hanging. And finally as he gets ready to depart the Americas and head back to England. After William's grandfather's passing, William has inherited Hellwater and John must go back to teach his son how to be an earl and manage his properties. What is wonderful about this season is John doesn't actually appear in the fifth book at all. Only correspondences between he and Jamie involve him in the story in any way. So his appearances are again a real treat for the fans. With season six, we saw him again at special occasions as all gathered to hear the story and Flora McDonald speak. He'd been sent basically to ensure Jamie was still loyal to the crown, a fact Lord John was sure of. During this short season, fans were able to get tiny doses of the Lord as he reunited with the Frasers. He helped defend a printer one moment and had a heart to heart with Jamie in another. Their friendship notwithstanding, they were on opposing sides of the conflict to come. And while Jamie did have special knowledge of the events soon to transpire, John is a seasoned enough soldier to feel what is to come. And we all watch, knowing these next years will truly test their bond. When it comes to Lord John, he is in every view and definition a gentleman. His purpose and his guiding principles are widely evident in every decision he makes both in the novels and on screen. From his willingness to put himself in harm's way for a woman he's never met, to raising a child for a man he'll never be as close to as he wishes he could be, to not taking advantage of the situation to have that once met. He's had the ability to do something so many fail at, finding friendship in someone who by all rights should be an enemy. He is the best of men and not even our hero can overshadow him as he is uniquely written and a striking character. So much so he's had his very own series of books because as Diana once put it, Lord John is a fascinating character. He's what I call a mushroom. One of those unplanned people who pops out of nowhere and walks off with any scene he's in. And she's right, who could blame her for feeling a need to give him a life of his own? Next season, of course, we will get him back along with another Frasier face but I suppose we have to wait until season seven for that story to continue. Until then, please check back here Sunday for my usual update and any behind the scenes news I happen to glean. If you haven't already, click the like and subscribe buttons below so I'll know what you think of this video and you'll get a heads up when my next one posts if you just happen to hit the alert bell as well. I just want to say another thank you for all the comments. They really made me think and sometimes inspire me for upcoming videos. So don't be shy, just remember to be respectful. I truly hope you enjoyed this video. You could always check out one of these if you did. And until next week, bye.